Lawrence. I uh, there was a, a quick question by Geo Geomu. Long story short, he asked how we could take this imported pattern and actually turn it into um, a file to where you can cut it out from a quarter inch board. I was going to go ahead and just do one to show you how I would do it, but in the end I decided, you know what, it's been a while since I've done a video, so if you bear with me, I want to do this fairly quickly. I haven't tried this yet, so this might take a little fumbling around. Um, so long story short is the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up this file. Um, just click on the picture. Any picture will work. Just I open it. And then what I do is I go ahead and copy the image, and then I close it out. And by the way, excuse me, I'm going to be taking slurps of whiskey here. Doing this. Hopefully it'll make my voice a little better. Okay, so I just opened up Paint.net. It's a free program. I love it. I can just go in there and Control V. That means paste. Uh, and then I also could have gone up to File Paste. I always say expand the canvas to make it the right size, so this is a nice big file. I'm going to go ahead and save it as now. So now what I can do is go ahead and save it as whatever type of file I want, like a bitmap. I don't know what this is. It kind of looks like a horse to me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and save it. It's a fairly big bitmap, but I think we're going to be OK. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is minimize everything down. I'm going to go into Horse 2. I, I did enough to start this and then decided to do a video for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and open this up with Corel Draw. Now I've got the student version of Corel Draw X5. Uh, I think it cost me about $30. So it's really not that expensive a product. And it's a great product for creating uh, DXF files, which are vector files. So I'm, I'm, I just right click and then I just open with Corel Draw. So as you can see right here, there's the, the bitmap that we did. Now this is not a vector drawing yet. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to convert this. It's already a bitmap, but I'm you know I'm going to go ahead and do an outline trace. I uh, call it a detailed logo, and it's going to ask me to reduce the size of the bitmap. And it's taken a while because it's fairly big. What I want to do is create these vector lines, and I want it to be as as, as clean and clear as I can. Um, I can play with the corner smoothness. You can see it's got a couple things going on here. Get rid of some details. What I can do is just play around with this until I get the shape and size and everything that I want. Um, you know, I, I, I don't care for this so far. I'm going to keep on playing with it for a moment. And, and really that's what I do. And you can go into here and you can actually get rid of the number of colors if you want to. You can see the impact on the bottom uh, down here that this is going to have on this. Uh, but if I take it down to two colors, it's going to give me uh, basically what I want. Okay, even more colors. Let's see. Okay, so two colors. It gave me the basic outline. If you if you can zoom in, you can see that you get the tabs still, and you get your whole outline for your piece. So that works pretty well for me. Uh, I probably will not smooth it down quite so much. If you look, I'm at about 1285, 95 on the nodes. That's the number of movements for the vector file. Okay, so again, I'm just sort of looking. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And what it did was it saved this back onto my onto my onto my file format. Now that's eight and a half by left piece of paper right there. So it's obviously too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a bit. Just so it'll fit onto a reasonable sized thing. Okay, so and I'm fine with this format because that's gonna go on the card right this way. 
Okay, so there's this. Now I'm going to go ahead and select it all in CorelDRAW. Go File, Export, and I want to choose DXF called Horse 2. That's fine. Just save it on my desktop so I know where to find it. I like AutoCAD 2004. So all I did right there was, you can see right here, that's a DXF file, and I saved it on my desktop. So now I should be able to go into my Carbrite Designer and go into here, and go Import DXF. Now you have to have the DXF importer for this. And do Import DXF. Again, that's a really powerful tool when used in coordination with CorelDRAW. Select on Horse 2. Hit OK. Now, yeah, luckily, it brought it in. Now, the first thing I want to check with this is sometimes when I use Curl Draw, what it does is it doubles up, and there's two of everything. Luckily, in this case, that didn't happen. So I can select all of them, give it a board, and hit Finish. It's going to go ahead and bring it in here. Now, the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to size these, size these things. Now, I believe you said for a quarter-inch slot. Okay, so what you need to do is you want to have these slots right here be a hair bit, really at quarter inch. You want to be a hair bit under a quarter inch because unless you're using plywood that I don't know how to use, <laughs> I don't know where it is, it, it, it's going to be under a quarter inch. It's a nominal thickness. So what I would do is I would take a pair of calipers, if I were you, and I would measure with a pair of calipers how... Uh, how thick your quarter inch plywood actually is. The next thing I would do is I'd go into here and just do a segment. I'd just draw a segment from here to here. And see how long that is. Now that's 0 0.095. And what we need it to be is we need it to be uh, 0.25. So this thing isn't even close to being the right size. So let's go ahead and bring up a new board. Let's make it a nice sized board, so 12 by 24. Uh, it's going to be a thickness of 0.25. You're going to use a sled, so it's even error. That's fine. And just go ahead and hit proceed, because you're going to use your sled. Go back over to your um, all your pieces. Let's select them all, including the little line we drew, and do Control c to copy. Control v to paste. Now let's go ahead and Now we can do it this way, which is a little bit hard, or we can go ahead and group the whole thing. And, and make it bigger when, with the group by just selecting the group. Like this. Okay, so now the, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is take this line, make it bigger. See, that's 0.162, so it's still far too small. So in this case, what I would do is move stuff around a bit um, and resize them all. So I'm going to go ahead and control. I'm uh, sorry again. I'm going to go ahead and, and group them like this. And it looks like I need to go about twice the size. Click on that. So that's 0.271. So that's not quite uh, the right size. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. And now that's about 0.27. So not not quite still. So I'm just continuing to shrink it down until I get this approximately to the right size. What I would do in your case is I would try at least one practice go um, or on just one piece to see if it fits. So 2.265. So we're getting there. Point two five nine. Okay, I'm really going to go faster here because we're obviously going to bore people when you guys are going to watch this video. So let's see here, click on line. 
0.216. Okay, so there's a little bit under 0.25. I have no clue if that's the right width or not. I would try cutting out one of these first. So now after I've got all my pieces, obviously they're bigger than my board. Um, so there's a couple things we can do. If you want to go into your board settings and make it say 36 long, hit proceed because it's saying it's too thin. And what you could do is you can go into here, grab some of these pieces, move them around and arrange them on your board in such a way as that they're going to fit easily. Now I'm just going to go goofy here just to give them to you so you've got them. I'm going to call it 48. So now you've got way more space than you need. And I'm just going to bring them on here. Oop, they goof up. Just hold on over. bad news about this is, and uh, again, this is not a very good way of doing it. We're wasting a lot of board here. The long story short is they're all on the board now. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I can select all these. See, I didn't quite get all these pieces back. And two of them didn't work. Just selecting them like that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit Control A just make sure all the pieces are on there. They are, in fact, on there. You're wasting a lot of wood with this. I would not try cutting this whole thing. But the easiest way to add these tabs is to go in here. Uh, you go ahead and click on Cut. So it's going to cut these things out. And remember, that's cutting to the inside of the line. This is your cut. So it cuts to the outside of the line. Oops, I didn't go in this far. Um, it's a quarter inch thick. I would probably not cut the whole thing in one pass. I might cut two passes, point, which is 0.125. Um, and, and that's a fine amount. Uh, three tabs on each piece is about right. Um, again, you can make it the whole quarter inch if you want to. Sometimes I do. Um, I, I need that just for my thickness. Um, the only time it may not be fine is if your thickness of your board is significantly set thinner than the extra quarter inch, like the 3 sixteenths, like the ring. Like carbon here and be a little bit more. Hit OK. And so then you can see that you've got all your your pieces here. Let's try to make this a little bit more Okay. So there's your pieces all cut out. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'll save this to PC. This is not working well. Um, it's just one way that you can do cutouts. Just shrink the eighth inch bit. Um, I'm going to use one of the smaller ones here and shrink the eighth inch bit just to verify everything is right. Put them up in perspective. Draw. That's how I do it. Um, there's a lot of other ways to do it, but again, if you use those cutout tabs um, and your piece is less than a quarter inch thick, you can set it to say less. If you want those tabs, um, you can see as it cut out, you can see uh, these tabs right here should be um, a little bit higher. Um, because if you say that the wood is 0.25, it's, it's probably not. So if you want to say it's an inch, you can say it's an inch. That's not good. You need tabs to show how many inches this piece is in. So I'm going to go ahead and move one of these off. And then making sure there's no space to cut out. So it's taking even longer to make this tab than um, what I think it's about to be. So in fact, I would cut a couple of these pieces uh, close to each other and maybe even cut one of them just to see if it makes a difference. Um, and I think this one looks better. And I'm just going to save this to my list. And I hope this helps.